the Bible Belt. Could be better termed, Fear tactics to prevent proper young ladies from allowing their bra straps to be handled by anyone other than their mothers, which, inadvertently, leads their curious fingertips behind the zippers of unadmittedly terrified proper young boys. You see, y'all, in the South, we feel very strongly about the fact that entire wall-sized photographs of herpes-ridden vaginas are all that pubescent and hormonal teenagers need to know about sexual contact and intimacy. My first experience with public school sex education went as follows. I was a freshman in high school. The teachers correct collected the parental consent forms and led us down the hallway into the school's auditorium leaving behind the awkward children of hyper-religious parents. You know, the ones who are either currently having sex or shame themselves into lifelong depressions because they just wanted to be touched. The presenters chose two audience members, a boy and a girl, respectfully, and gave them both colored cardstock cutouts of hearts. The presenters described their dreamy first day, complete with a springtime picnic on a red plaid blanket and delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. The date ended in a semi-consensual virginity sharing between the two, which the presenters illustrated by gluing together the cardstock hearts. Sadly, the relationship between the boy and the girl didn't last long. And to illustrate their breakup, the presenters ripped the hearts apart, leaving scattered porcupines of color on the surfaces of one another. This, we were boldly informed, is the consequence of sex. This was followed by a series of photographs, uncomfortable statistics on the rates of teen pregnancies, and an offer to engage in an abstinence pledge until your heterosexual Christian marriage. I was never told about condoms, shown a condom, provided access to a condom. In fact, I had never seen a condom until age 17 when I stole a yellow pineapple Trojan from my older brother's dresser drawer to guess how large I could expect a penis to be. I was never told I have a clitoris, where it is, what it does, and my later sexual experiences led me to the conclusion that young boys were never given this information either. The results? Ridiculous myths perpetuated by uninformed, sexually active teenagers. Dude, she can't get pregnant if she doesn't orgasm. Oh, well, I've never had sex before, so I can't get pregnant. Bruh, just turn the condom inside out. Reduce, reuse, recycle. If you jump up and down like 20 times immediately after having sex, the sperm like totally doesn't reach the egg. <laughs> it's gravity. If she says yes and acts like she wants it, it's game on. Even if she says no later, <laughs> she's just playing hard to get. No, I was never informed about the importance of communication and consent. I was never told that nervous sheets are not the place to discuss boundaries. I was told that no means no, but not that no is not enough for a rapist. There are little girls spreading their self-esteem wide open, hoping for the mystery of some romanticized intimacy to fill them whole. And there are little boys too scared to ask for permission and taking it anyways. Sex is being packaged in caution tape and a chastity belt and served on their Sunday school dinner plates. Their questions are shunned on their quivering throats into their curious bellies. The answers will only come to those willing to explore the playground of their bodies with intention when you demonize idealize, romanticize, misrepresent the most intrinsically innocent dance of human connection, of tactile love. How could you ever expect them to love themselves enough to practice respect? Babies, sex does not always mean love. 
It should never be demanded. It does not always include God, and it doesn't have to. Sex means whatever you believe it to mean. In the ever-fluxing, momentary, you.